Welcome to Community Matters. I'm Trisha Heiss. Today we're going to be talking with Suzanne Dow, who is the director of Circle of Hope. Circle of Hope services three counties, Habersham, Stevens, and White counties, and helps those who are victims of domestic violence. Domestic violence is a very, very important topic for me as well as all of you who are watching this program. Domestic violence crosses socioeconomic boundaries. It has a way of repeating itself. It's called the circle of violence. The circle of hope helps those who have been battered and abused. They provide wraparound services. They have a shelter. They also help people who are seeking temporary and permanent protective orders by providing advocates for those who are um, having to go to court. The Circle of Hope um, benefits all of these people from Habersham, Stevens, and White counties, but it also works intimately with community partners. And we're going to be talking today about a very important fundraiser that the Circle of Hope just participated in, and that is the Dancing with the Stars for Hope fundraiser that was held on March the 28th of 2015. Suzanne, perhaps, is going to give us a little bit of insight and some behind-the-scenes knowledge about the Dancing with the Stars for Hope and perhaps some hints about what's to come. Who do you think would make a great celebrity dancer? And do you know any professionals that could help out? There were tens of thousands of dollars that were raised by those participating in businesses who partnered up with Circle of Hope for the Dancing with the Stars for Hope. And we're going to talk about those funds and where they're going to be utilized in our community and across county lines. I'm Suzanne Dow. I'm the director of Circle of Hope. I have been with the agency for 18 years. Wow. Um, yeah, the, I did not start off as the director. I was a, an advocate, a case manager, working with victims directly for the first four years. And then um, the director who had hired me moved on and talked me into taking over as, as the director of the agency. And it's been a blessing ever since. I'm sure that in a way 18 years feels like forever ago and then in another way it feels like it's just it happened in the blink of an eye. That is true. Um, over the time that you have served as director for Circle of Hope, have you experienced or seen any changes in the way that victims um, report or don't report as it relates to the abuse that they are experiencing? I think, I think more victims are reporting since, since I started working in this field, um, definitely. And the more awareness that's brought to the, the communities about resources that are available to victims, then the more likely they are to reach out. So that's what, that's what we've tried to do as an agency is really um, create that awareness. We've opened satellite offices in those other two counties that we serve so that victims don't have to drive to Habersham County to seek services. Um, and it's really made a difference. I think law enforcement's even seen um, higher reporting um, over the years to us as well. Because before, people just didn't know that there were resources there to help. So the more that people know that, the more likely they are to reach out for help. Do you think that television and social media have also contributed to people feeling more comfortable and confident in coming forward to report their abuse? I do. I do. I think anytime people realize other people are going through the same thing they are, they're more likely to, to, to say, this isn't just me. This is not just my, my relationship or my experience. This is something other people have experienced as well, and, and I want to do something to change my situation. I do think that, that definitely the media and um, Facebook and seeing different things um, has made a difference for victims. If you could please explain to our audience in just a few short sentences exactly what it is that Circle of Hope does. We have the shelter. As, as Most people are very familiar with our shelter. That's what we started off as, an emergency shelter for, for women and children that are in danger to flee to. But what people don't realize is all the other services that we provide and all the other things we're doing to try to prevent domestic violence. Um, we have um, a school prevention program where we teach youth that, that hands are not for hitting, a healthy expression of feelings, just trying to, to really prevent the the, the the violence from even starting if they're seeing it as children in their home to educate them that this is not um, a healthy relationship and what that would look like. Uh, we also work with victims who don't need shelter. We, we serve between four and five hundred families a year who don't even come through our shelter but need a protective order or want support group or counseling services um, or just need some financial assistance to get back on their feet because they've, they're leaving in the process of leaving their abusive partner. So um, there's a lot of things that we do um, just 
to, to support victims and, and help with that recovery. Um, we have a 24-hour crisis line that's staffed 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. We do education, training. Um, we go in and, and train employers on workplace violence. A lot of times employers don't even realize the, the kind of risk and, and danger that they might be in or their, or their employees might be in because of an abusive partner stalking um, their victim at work. So um, you see that on the media a lot. You see where, where somebody has come in and they're targeting their, their partner and they're trying to harm their partner, but other people and bystanders get hurt as well. So there's policies and procedures that people can implement to, to reduce that risk to employers. Let's talk a little bit about the education um, through childhood education. Are you working with the school system or yes. with, with other schools in our mm -hmm. area mm -hmm. that um, that provide education and services for those young young children? Yes. So what hap our hit what happened to us was about in the year two thousand and two. Our shelter had been open 12 years at that point. We had opened in 1990. And around 2002, we started seeing young mothers coming into the shelter who had been in the shelter in the early 90s with their mothers. And now they're, okay. now they're 19, 20, 21, coming back into the shelter with their own children. And, and we, that's when we realized as an agency, we've done some wonderful intervention services for these years, but we have not done enough prevention. So we implemented a school prevention program where we go in from kin kindergarten all the way through college classes and teach um, the, 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 the prevention, violence prevention curriculums. And then of course in high school and college we teach dating violence awareness and, and education. Is that a part of the hands are for helping, not for hitting? Mm -hmm. That's what the little kids get. <laughs> yes. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I've heard that more than once from mm -hmm. my little boy. Mm -hmm. Well good, the message is getting out there. You don't just focus on public school systems, you also no. do the... Um... Private, we do, we do Girl Scout, Boy Scout groups, youth groups. We'll go anywhere where there are youth and, and that the message can be shared. Well, I think that it's working very well. I hope that it is. Only time will tell, I guess, with, right. the, with the cycle. And of course, we are talking about the cycle of violence. And um, as an attorney that practices here locally throughout North Georgia, um, one of the things that I have to look at in representing people of domestic violence is the cycle of violence and trying to explain to others um, who may not have ever experienced that type of behavior from someone how, um, how the cycle of violence can actually create some type of like mental buffer or, or otherwise it, it prohibits or inhibits people from being able to process the fact that they are still in danger, even though at that moment in time, perhaps they're not being physically abused. Mm -hmm. So if you could please explain what it means when we're talking about the cycle of violence. Mm -hmm. Well, um, there, there's a visual that a lot of people have seen with a, like a, a circle, and, and basically after an, a violent act has occurred, the perpetrator will go into the um, what people call refer to the honeymoon phase, where there's um, apologies, gifts, flowers, um, oh, promises. Nice. Yeah, promises. and and that's the person. I mean, and you got to think about the and from the victim standpoint that they did not fall in love with the person who, when they fell in love with this person, that person was not abusing them. So when they get these promises of of I'm going to change, it's going to be the way it used to be they want that that's what they really want so they hold on to that and they think this is going to be the time he really changes or or she um we did talk about we've talked about that in the past how how men can also be victimized as well um so but but then things start um the as you go around this the, things start to escalate again eventually so things will be okay for a little while during that what, what's called the honeymoon phase and then things start to escalate again women can can tense um victims can tense that that things are getting bad again. They're starting to be threats. Um, um, they're walking on eggshells. Right, that's what a lot of people use that they're, term. They, they, know they have something's a lot of stress. Coming. They know mm -hmm. that it's coming. What is going to be the breaking mm -hmm. point? And unfortunately, there is a breaking point. There is, right, and it will happen again. Mm -hmm. Wow. Well, um, um, one of the things that I do want to talk to you about is the fundraising activities that you you have had this is the Cir um, the circle of hope has participated in many fundraising activities but most recently you have in fact done the um dancing with the stars for hope yes what a wonderful wonderful opportunity it was to participate in the dancing with the stars for hope can you tell us how much money was raised a little over sixty four thousand um sixty four thousand profit yes profit yes. that mm -hmm. is Phenomenal. It was amazing. It was mm -hmm. amazing. I, and I you were a big part of that. Well, <laughs> <laughs> well, 
We, you know, it was an, I knew I couldn't dance. <laughs> so many people say that. <laughs> Well, I felt like I couldn't. I felt like I couldn't dance, but I knew that I could. I could help raise some money. So, um, one of the things, just very briefly, one of the things that I noticed: we are in your beautiful office, and it is so well decorated. And you were telling me <laughs> that all of the artwork and accessories in this office were provided um, to you, or on behalf right. of Circle of Hope, mm -hmm. by the thrift store. Yes. <clears throat> yes, our thrift stores get amazing things. Wh so we go shopping for our, great. For our offices. <laughs> that is great. Can you tell tell us where the thrift stores are located? Sure. Um, one is um, right on Highway 115 across from the old courthouse in Clarksville. Okay. That's our Clarksville store. It's been there since 2000. It's, it's been there a long time. And then in 2012, we opened one here in Cornelia. Uh, it's at 142 Lee Street, right behind what people refer to as the farm and seed building is the old bread discount place. Um, That's what I recall is the old bread bread discount place. I'll never forget just as a child, there was a really bad tornado one time when we took shelter there. So that, really? that yeah. is like impacted in my brain. Yeah, yeah that's cool. <laughs> but these two, um, these two facilities, the, the thrift stores, are some of the ways that you were able to raise money f to benefit your yes. circle of hope, yes. Yes. the yes. services that you provide right. to those who are um, battered. Um, I'm sure you also get funding through state and federal funding. We do, right. Maybe some grants. We get uh, state and federal grants. We also get United Way funding from all three counties that we serve. Um, individuals, churches, um, private organizations, wow. and the thrift stores. Mm -hmm. That's great. And now the fundraiser. And now the fundraiser. <laughs> what a great segue. That's right. where I was headed. <laughs> Um, so you've just wrapped up and finished off the wonderful Dancing with the Stars for Hope that you cleared in profit 62,000, I'm sorry, $64,000. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. What a wonderful, wonderful way to raise money and awareness in the community. And of course you had a partner through the fundraising process and that was Habersham Rotary. Yes. Um, can you tell us a little bit about the experience in putting together the, the Dancing with the Stars for Hope? It was a lot of work. <laughs> I, 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 did, I, I physically observed that. I did not think it would be as much work as it was, to be quite honest, because you're thinking you recruit some dancers. Right. They go dance. They go dance. What else could you People do? People vote for them. It's, it's an easy fundraiser, but it was really a lot of work. But it was it was so worth it. I mean, yes. um, the, seeing the level of commitment that our dance teams put into this was amazing. Um, we had so many people working with us, offering their space, you know, for people to rehearse different different scenarios. We had so many sponsors and and people who purchased ads, and then of course ticket buyers. And right. so um, um, I know that some of the dancers told me afterwards well, that when they heard we were sold out, they were so surprised. They were like, "We just thought maybe two or three hundred people, people maybe sure, would, right. would come. Our friends and <laughs> Who's family." Come see me dance? Right. He was like, "My friends and family," and I was like, "We wouldn't do a fundraiser for just your friends and family. We want everybody to come." Right. So. Um, and they did. I mean, we had close to 700 people in, in that facility that night, so it was amazing. It was an amazing experience, and, and thank you so much for the opportunity to, to dance in it. When I when um, I got the call and was asked to do it, it, I was completely, there was no hesitation whatsoever. I was completely in. But I thought to myself, I don't know how to dance. I honestly haven't danced dance since I was, I don't know, seven, eight, nine years old. and. Um, of course, Ms. Donna Trotter, who right. was our stage manager, was the last person who taught me anything. Me too. Yes. <laughs> so it had been a while. And I, I, but as the time progressed, I realized that there were a lot of other teams in the same position that I was in. Mm -hmm. And their level of commitment and the performances that they gave were just phenomenal. Mm -hmm. So did you have a favorite or, or no? Oh, they were all great. They were all great. Of <laughs> they course were all, they were. All, they were great. <laughs> they were it was all a great. Very, that's what was so amazing. It was so entertaining from start to finish. There was not a, a dance that did not entertain. Absolutely. And I'm, um, I, I agree with that. I think one of the telltales was that my dad, after it was, was over with, we had lunch the next day. And he said to me, he was like, Tricia, I really didn't know what to expect. Honestly, I thought you were all going to dance the same dance, wow. and then the the judges would choose which one it was would mm -hmm. would win. He said, but as soon as those curtains opened up and the dancers started coming out with their different outfits, he was like, "Wow, where <laughs> am I? This is going to be great." Yeah. So um, I think that the awareness that the community has now, as it relates to Circle of Hope, as it relates to Habersham Rotary, and the fundraising capabilities is just phenomenal. Right. 
Right. We so, hope that it will just grow. You know, each year, as, as long as we can can make this work and make and make raise money with it and, and it continue to be excess, we'll keep doing it. I have to be honest with you. I've been scanning your office trying to look at the secret list. I'm sure. <laughs> There's not, I'm sure you got there is some a big ideas. sticky somewhere. There's a big sticky. We've had a lot of people who have come to us and said, "I would love to be part of that." You know, like and we uh -huh. and it's so great because, you know, the first time around you were very willing, but not everybody jumped on board very, you know, right away. Um, and so now that I think people do realize what it is we're asking of them and what yes. this looks like, that that hopefully we we will get people recruited. And Absolutely. Well, if anybody's watching this and they want a little bit of advice, I'm just going to tell you exactly what I think. It's a huge commitment. Mm -hmm. If you really want to compete, um, it is a huge commitment. And I think that both Circle of Hope and Habersham Rotary did a phenomenal job in finding people who Alexander. are highly competitive. Congratulations. Because team. there wasn't a single team out there that wasn't out there to win it. Right. And it was very entertaining. Yes. Um, and let's talk about all of the different advertising that y'all obtain. I mean, I saw it on social media. I saw it on now Habersham. I saw it in, uh, in the newspaper. Mm -hmm. um, it was everywhere. Right. So, I mean, just the, the ability to reach out and to find um, the venues and the, the access through those venues is, was, mm -hmm. was pretty awesome. We can't take all the credit for that. Um, Lane Gresham actually met with me very early on and she made uh, on a napkin, she, I was writing down, she was mapping it out for me. You do this at this time, you do this at this time. And with basically a timeline even of, of when to do certain things. And it was, she was very helpful. And That's then she, great. And then she handled all of our Facebook stuff for us. So, so she's, she's a very, very good helpful. friend. Yes. So how are you gonna use your portion of the $64,000? What does Circle of Hope have in mind um, through this upcoming year? Well, this year, what we raised this year is part of our operating budget. To, to have met our budget this year, we had to have a fundraiser. Um, so, because our, our need, the, as the, I, I didn't mention this earlier, but we, we serve, you know, over 54 families a year in our housing programs on wow. top of our shelter program. Our programs have grown um, and our grant money has, has not. So as, as more needs are there and more people are being served, we have to be creative. So for us this year, our, our proceeds went to our operating budget to help us run our programs. Um, I hope that as this thing grows and ho hopefully makes more money, we could start even paying off some of our debt on our facility because we do have a mortgage on the shelter that we would love to chip away at and be done with. So That would be great. Well, I want to say thank you once again, Suzanne Dow, for being here today. Thank you for the opportunity to interview you and um, to view your beautiful offices here that are funded or are provided for by, through the um, through the thrift stores with the Circle of Hope. And I invite you all, ladies and gentlemen, to visit the thrift stores. That's where I personally make a lot of my son's donations yes. as well. Mm -hmm. So it's a great, great opportunity for um, a donation, but also a great opportunity to put people to work mm -hmm. and to provide for others. Yes. I want to ask you just let our, our viewers know some statistics about the Circle of Hope. Um, obviously, you you work um, with the counties of Habersham, Stevens, and White counties. So tell our audience about what type of figures, what type of numbers that we're talking right, about. Right, right. And, and unfortunately, there's a lot more abuse that occurs than what we're able to help. But as an agency, um, we answer over a thousand crisis calls a year from our service area. We um, shelter usually an average of 100 women and 100 children, so right around 200 um, women and children in the emergency shelter. At uh, a time? No, each year. Each year, each year. okay. The shelter is a 17-bed facility, so we can't have more than 17 at a time. But, but unfortunately, we have a higher need, so we still deny shelter to you know, 50 or more families a year who are seeking shelter services, but we don't have the space for them. So um, we don't want to tell anybody we can't help them. So when that happens, we either try to get them into another shelter in North Georgia um, or offer them a hotel if we need to so that, that they can still get out of there. But but yet our facility has not always got the space to accommodate them. Um, and then in an in a outreach capacity, which is working with victims who don't need shelter but are experiencing abuse, they might need a protective order, they want to attend support group, they um, need a safety plan, they need to pursue a warrant um, through the magistrate court system. It, whatever the options or, or needs are, we serve anywhere between 300 and 500 families a year in our outreach um, program. Wow. 
And then we serve an additional um, a, a average of 50 families a year in our housing programs, which are one and two year um, programs that victims who have left the shelter can move into for ongoing support. Shelter is temporary emergency assistance, and then our housing programs offer more long-term support to help break that cycle of violence that we've talked about. Wow, how many children do you think that the Circle of Hope comes into contact with in a year? About 300. That is just, mm -hmm. it's heartbreaking, mm -hmm. absolutely heartbreaking. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of people also want to know about the number of pets that mm -hmm. um, families have. Are, are, are you, do you work with the local Humane Society or animal shelter? We actually have our own animal kennel on site now. It was oh. a dream of ours for years because victims often won't flee their home or leave their home if their pets are going to, if you know they can't bring their pets. Either abusers have um, threatened to harm the pets or have actually harmed pets before. So um, we had always wanted our own on-site animal kennel well, before we had partnered with other with a Hemza house out of Atlanta, which meant pets were going out of the area sometimes to be sheltered. But um, we now have our own kennel on site. That is so wonderful. People can bring their pets. Wow. Mm -hmm. In wrapping up, what is a wish list? A bigger shelter? Um, maybe additional staff? What is it that, um, looking forward into the future and throughout some fundraising, what, what is it that Circle of Hope would like to have? Mm -hmm. um, Wow, lots, lot, everything you said. <laughs> we always, our staff will <laughs> we'll tell you that, every day. That, yeah, every day, our staff tell they're so overwhelmed and, uh -huh. and they have a hard time keeping up with the the needs that present themselves. Um, we we do we would love to pay off our facility and expand um, one day, but that's Plan B after we've paid off the initial facility. Um, yeah, just being able to offer more services, more more of that long-term support. Like our, I would love to do more housing programs. That's really where we've seen a lot of those um, generational changes for families, for their, their women and the children, is because we're offering that case management and that counseling um, for for several years instead of just you know 30 or 60 days. Right. And um, it's really made a difference in those families. So I'd love to do more more long-term housing for families that are trying to break that cycle. Wow. You're doing a wonderful job. Keep up the great work. Thank you. I want to say thank you once again to Suzanne Dow, the director of Circle of Hope, for being here today. If you would like to um, participate in fundraising capabilities or opportunities for Circle of Hope, all you have to do is check out their website. And what is that? www.gacircleofhope.org.